Okay, hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning and happy new year. Uh, welcome to what may well be for many of you your first webinar of 2021. Uh, my name is Matt Waring, I'm the editor of ARC magazine and I'm delighted to welcome you all to what I'm sure will be a fascinating session from Elderled and Dali Alliance mastering the human centric lighting experience. Now, human centric lighting is a term that the lighting industry has become all too familiar with over the past few years with many people having their own definitions or ideas of what it means and how best to achieve it. But one thing that is clear, however, is that to achieve the optimum human centric lighting experience, you need a reliable lighting control system, LED driver and light technology behind your designs. Uh, in today's session, we're joined by a couple of insider experts in Hey Hulsman, who's director of specified services at Elderled, and Paul Drozine of the Dali Alliance, who will delve a little deeper into this topic and explain further how programming consistent, interoperable dynamic behavior can help you achieve your desired dynamic lighting goals. Uh, I'll now hand you over to Hay and Paul, who will each give a short presentation before we turn things over to a Q&A session where you can ask our presenters your specific questions. You can submit your questions at any time using the Q&A box, uh, and I'll be keeping an eye on all questions coming through, and we'll look to get through as many as we can during the Q&A session. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Hay, who will get us started with the first presentation. Many thanks, Matt. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening for everybody who's, uh, who's dialed in to this webinar from Eldolet in close cooperation with the Dali Alliance and with ARC magazine. Indeed, today we will talk about the role of human-centered lighting and how to really manage and master that into your, um, into your solutions. First, I would like to start with some definitions about uh, let, let me start by explaining to you the human-centric lighting approach. For us as Elderlet, the human-centric lighting approach is really where light is being used, light is being specified, if you wish, where the user is really um, has been put in the, well, in the heart of, of your design process. And when we talk about several roles, um, it's important to, to realize that, um, that that's always dependent on several applications. I mean, you can mimic daylight, um, you can uh, manage the circadian cycle, you, make, you can make a specific solution for a specific uh, environment that you want to create. And for us, that is human-centric uh, lighting. Within, within Elderlet over the years, we've, we've learned that there are several ways in which you can actually achieve that. And up until now, we have been focusing on technologies that enable that, that perfect light when it comes to proper dimming, when it comes to a good story on flicker. And the, the general idea of good lighting is that the, the, uh, the illuminated environment should not negatively impact people. It should create a comfortable and very engaging environment for the occupants that actually use the, the light. Talking about circadian lighting, um, which is part of the human centric approach, obviously, we all know that if we talk about the human species, the human body, we all need light and darkness cycles. And that is valid for natural light, but also for electrical light. Uh, the human species have been living under the sun and under the moons for tens of, tens of thousands of years. And, uh, well, many studies have been made about the impact that the circadian cycle has on the human body as, uh, as such. If you talk about this approach in electric light, um, it's obvious that you as a designer have to think of several topics that are crucial there. And there are three elements that are key here, which is um, changes in intensity, obviously, proper dimming, uh, changes in color, uh, spectral control would be ideal here, but also change in, uh, changes in directionality of your light. We all know that the sun shines from above, fires shine from below, and if you walk outside, light from the horizon just shines straight into your, um, straight into your eye. Within Elderlet, we are offering you a bunch of tools, a bunch of technologies that ba basically help you, um, well, to have your projects, to have your creative ideas come true and become uh, reality. We've built a digital platform of uh, drivers that basically help you to actually achieve just, uh, just that. And that is the start of the story that I would like to share with you today. One um, important thing I would like to manage though, that if we talk about human-centric lighting, or circadian lighting as such, it's definitely not only about having an LED change color from warm to cold and back. I would say that every Tom, Dick and Harry can do that. No, it's about managing that dynamic cycle, that circadian cycle in your projects. 
and that's not always uh, that's not always easy um, because you have lots of light to uh, to consider. Right. Let's move into um, uh, the topic of today, which is creating that dynamic approach with the DALI protocol. We all know that DALI is a very important light protocol in the, in the professional environment. And I'm very happy that we found uh, the general manager of the DALI Alliance, Paul, to, um, well, to, to share his thoughts and his views on, uh, on this. If we talk about the DALI uh, protocol, uh, well, let's look to what's on the slides uh, here today. Um, obviously, we'll start with an LED. This LED needs to be steered. If you use a DALI driver, this DALI driver actually translates the DALI commands that come from a dimmer or a controller, that DALI command is being sent over towards the driver or to the center, obviously, and that is then translating that into a light. Um, and that's the starting point of uh, DALI, digital addressable lighting interface as, uh, as such. The challenge for you, and there are many lighting designers currently in, the, in, in, in our call here, is basically to make sure that um, this dynamic approach uh, is, is being managed consistently in your projects. Now let's look at an example that you as a lighting designer or as a luminaire maker has, uh, have experienced. You got an assignment from a very nice hotel to create a dynamic um, uh, a light experience in a hotel room. This is what you, what you see here. And you specified downlights from, down from a certain brand. You specified lights behind the curtains in the cove. You specified lights behind the bed, even lights outside on the balcony. And this is what you need to manage consistently in your projects if you want the, this dynamic cycle to be, uh, to be valid. And that's not easy because every LED is different technically. Every luminaire has different LEDs inside. And the managing of that process is something that I would love to learn you today in this, uh, in this webinar. And in order to learn you properly, I'm going to give you a bit of a strange uh, example. I'm going to make an analogy towards four artists. Imagine you have four painters, four artists, if you wish. And every artist, you see them here on your screen, has a palette, um, a painter's palette, if you wish. And on that palette, I give every artist two tubes of paint, one tube of red paint and another tube of blue paint. But all of these paints that I give to those four artists come from different factories. They are uh, manufactured differently. So the tones of red that are in the paint and the tones of blue that are in the paint are completely, uh, are completely different. And I will give those four painters an assignment. Could you please create the color purple for me? So what they do, they take their palette. Obviously, they went into their own rooms. They take their palette and they put a little bit of blue paint on the palette and a little bit of red paint. They mix that and then they come back to me. So I have four well, palettes with mixed paints in front of me and the chance that those four painters have created the same color purple is actually very close to zero. Well, actually zero. Because in essence, the, things, the, 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 the two items you need to think about in giving such an assignment to a painter is exactly the same things you need to think of if you go into the circadian cycle, if you go to the human-centric lighting approach. Because there are two elements that are crucial here. First, once and for all, we have to start um, defining the color purple in, in paint, but also the color white that we want to create if we are going into the, uh, into the, uh, into the human-centric uh, cycle. That's the first thing we, we need to think of, and this is where Paul later will talk about uh, the impact that DALI as a, as a protocol has on this specific assignment. That's assignment number one. Assignment number two is how do you actually mix those colors? Um, basically, if the painters don't know which types of red and blue paint they have in their tubes, there is no way they, well, they can actually create a very specific color purple that I've been, uh, that I've been asking. And those are the two topics of, uh, of today, because obviously we would like to avoid that all of those colors purple become different. Eh? The same as in a dynamic lighting approach, we want to uh, avoid that in your hotel room, all the different shades of white are, are different if you, don't, uh, if you don't want that. And in order for do, to do so, we uh, continue our presentation with the definition of color. And this is where DALI, the DALI protocol comes in, and Paul will, uh, will talk about that. And afterwards, I will come back and I will further teach you about how light shape helps you in order to avoid just that. So I will hand over to Paul from the DALI Alliance 
and uh, I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll, he'll teach you uh, many things about DALI as well. Many thanks. All right, thanks very much, Hey. Uh, can you hear me okay? I hope it's okay. Loud um, you. So, yeah, as Hey said, I'm just going to take you on a, on a journey, a little bit of background about uh, the, the DALI Alliance. Um, and uh, and what we're doing to uh, to, to standardise behaviour in the uh, in the lighting industry, um, to, uh, to to make it easier to uh, to to overcome these these challenges that uh, that we all face in the industry. So, uh, if we can start with the first slide, please. Yeah, thanks. So I'll, I'll start with a bit of background about the, the the alliance, who we are, what we do. So, DALI Alliance or, or DIA is is known as a, a an open global consortium of lighting companies. Um, we're also sometimes known as Digital Illumination Interface Alliance. That's a lot more difficult to say than the DALI Alliance. Um, and we have uh, just over 250 members worldwide, uh, the industry leaders in lighting and control. The, and you can see uh, uh, some examples of those on, on the right hand side, which of course includes uh, our, our partners today, uh, uh, Elder led as part of the uh, Acuity brands. And um, membership allows certification or registration of products. Um, and you can see that we, we now have over 1,500 DALI2 certified products. Um, and they already overtook the, uh, the number of DALI version 1 registered products. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the distinction between certification and, and registered products in, in a second. And of course, um, the, uh, the the membership and the uh, the certification or registration enables a trademark use. On the next slide, we can talk a little bit more about uh, what DALI can do. Um, and I'm not going to cover this in depth, uh, but uh, just a quick overview because there may be people viewing the presentation uh, not not so familiar with DALI. Um, so. First thing is, as Hay mentioned, digital control of light quality with intelligent feedback. So that word digital um, puts us in a uh, in a very strong position in the first place. Um, DALI is, is digital and it's bi-directional. That means that you can get precise, repeatable light output control um, and it's it's standardized. And, and DALI is well known for its standardized dimming curve and, and we'll touch on that uh, in a moment. Other things that DALI can do um, that we're not going to talk about today, uh, for example, occupancy and light level sensing, uh, luminaire energy and diagnostic data, a very important topic and, and certainly a topic in itself, um, which gives the, uh, the, the data and feedback for enhanced asset management and performance monitoring. Um, for emergency lighting, you have the automated testing uh, and uh, automated reporting potential. Um, today we're talking about color control, specifically tunable white, uh, which is now part of the DALI 2 certification program. And, uh, and of course, as you probably already know, DALI is well positioned to participate in the Internet of Things. As I say, the focus today is tunable white. So let's go to the next slide and continue to build the story. Um, for uh, about DALI 2 certification. So um, DIA or DALI Alliance is the uh, driver of the DALI 2 certification program. We're continually working to evolve and update uh, this program um, and uh, always adding, adding sorry, new features and new product types. Uh, DALI 2 certification involves rigorous and detailed testing. Um, it takes approximately three days to test a DALI 2 LED driver, and then that's followed by verification, independent verification of the test results. And why is that important? Um, it's, it's the thing which delivers this high confidence of interoperability between products, not only between um, device to device, but also uh, cross vendor compatibility from, uh, from vendor to vendor. And uh, all of those products which are certified are then traceable in the DIA database, so you can verify that uh, you know this, they've undergone this testing program. 
So on the next slide, we'll look then more at uh, what does that mean for color control? Oh, sorry. Uh, so Dali for dimming. So just to build the story, uh, Dali is well known for, for, for its dimming uh, curve, and that's the certified Dali 2 control gear um, follow a standardized dimming curve, which means that you get uh, highly repeatable and accurate um, uh, output, light output, depending on the input requested. Um, and the testing procedure requires the measurement of the actual light output. That means that if you ask for 50% light output, you get 50% light output. Um, and this is, as I mentioned before, consistent from fixture to fixture and con consistent between manufacturers. And that's very important for our industry um, because you don't want the behaviors to be different um, for different luminaires. So on the next slide, we look a little bit more closely at uh, color control. Um, color control includes tunable white. So um, that enables color control out of the output of two or more lamps. Um, from the Dali control gear. Uh, this is simple color control. Um, so RGBWAF, uh, that's red, green, blue, white, amber, and free uh, for individual control of the, uh, of the channel colors. And then uh, tunable white uh, for color temperature control. And it also enables um, precise and repeatable selection of color from the XY coordinates or chromaticity. Um, it enables the smooth fading between colors. Um, and for accuracy, XY and TC colors allow uh, calibration. And on the next slide, we explore that in a more detail still. So looking at DALI 2 for tunable white, um, the certification now includes tunable white control. Um, this allows uh, precise control of the, uh, of the color correlated temperature of the CCT along the black body line from warm white to cool white. Um, that means that the CCT is selected and the driver does the calculations. Now the driver does the calculations based on the, uh, the, the input which is selected, which is the CCT that's user selectable um, and the, um, then calculates the output based on what it knows about the uh, the output channels, the uh, the lamps effectively of the uh, of the device. So on the right hand side here, you can see an example where there are two um, uh, different LEDs. One is a warm white, one is a cool white, and you see there that they have a uh, a very different spectral composition. So one has a lot more reds and uh, and ambers, and one has a lot more blues and greens. And there you see that uh, they are creating the palette to which uh, Hay is uh, is referring. So the LEDs, as I say, in its simplest form, in simplest form, it could be two, uh, it could be more channels, um, and uh, and they create this this palette that uh, that we're talking about. So now we know two things: we know the the CCT which is selected precisely in the digital format um, that is requested from the user. And then if we know the, uh, the, the LEDs or the lamps that are being used, then we know what the limitations are uh, or the parameters, the palette that we have to play with. And so tunable white DALI 2 LED drivers implement the color part TC, um, which is of part 209, uh, which is the part of, uh, of DALI which refers to color. Uh, sometimes known as DT8, uh, device type 8 uh, TC, which is tunable white, uh, and this drives the repeatable uh, CCT uh, through calibration of the driver and lamp configuration. And of course, then scenes can now recall, uh, allow recall and smooth fading of the color as well as the brightness. And then on the next slide, we can see a, a case study or a practical example where that's uh, put into use. And at this point, I'll hand back to, uh, to Hay to, uh, to give more detail about the uh, about its application. Paul, many thanks. That uh, was uh, perfectly explained. Many thanks about the added value of, uh, of DALI and how DALI and especially DT8 can actually help you to define a certain color. So I would say this is a major breakthrough 
and lighting controls, because up till now that was, that was not really um, possible to actually ask for certain color temperatures. Before I further dive into that, I would like to share with you one of our case studies in which we've implemented a big um, DALI 2 DT8 um, uh, implementation, which is in the Netherlands, here in the Netherlands, in the Forum Groningen, which is a big library, and it's a house of the city, if you wish, where we have more than, it's a 10-story building, um, uh, where we have more than 10,000 tunable white LED modules in close cooperation with the Dutch OEM called TDA Light Tag, where we have installed many of the tunable white uh, LED drivers inside with perfect dimming all the way down to 0.1%, where we dynamically have a possibility to adjust the color temperature from 2,500 to 4,000 LEDs over all of these luminaires. And that's, uh, that went perfectly well. Uh, so it's a big, uh, nice, uh, successful implementation. Our first true big implementation of the DALI uh, 2 device up 8 uh, story as, uh, as such. Right, let's get back to, um, uh, well, the story of our painters, if you wish. Because Paul has uh, just explained that um, the DALI language is great in basically asking for a certain color temperatures. And before DALI uh, DT8 actually existed, uh, all system integrators, lighting designers actually used color meters in order to measure this color. So what actually happened before um, this new uh, development of DALI DT8, uh, we kind of mixed cold and warm white um, LEDs. We needed a color meter to actually measure this light. And then if we wanted 2700 Kelvin, we, we well, we, we, uh, we fiddled around, if you wish, with, the both, with two of the, uh, of the sliders with the, with the LEDs in order, up until the time that we've created this color, we set the scene, uh, we fixed this scene uh, of 2700 Kelvin, and then we feed this informa information back to uh, a DALI control. And this is the way in which we manage color. That went perfectly well, but today, with DALI 2 DTH, we have a possibility to, well, to get rid of this color meter as such, because the, uh, um, the color language, uh, the DALI 2 language has actually enabled us to ask for color information. But also Paul has just learned you that asking for this color information is one, this is where DALI 2 comes in, but the driver needs to calculate this, uh, this information. And this is exactly what I teach the Lumina uh, uh, makers currently in the call, but also the specifiers currently in the call, um, what, what it is that you need to do. You need to include in your total light solution something that makes your total system color aware that basically includes color mixing algorithms. And we've solved this problem for you because we've, uh, we've enabled our tunable uh, DALI DT8 drivers to have color mixing algorithms inside that you can actually use. And we call this light shape. So light shape is further cleverness that we've integrated into our driver that actually manage that color cycle in a very, uh, in a very clever way. Before we'll take a deep dive in this, I need you to understand that also the human eye is extremely sensitive for color changes. Um, obviously, we know that the human eye is extremely sensitive for intensity changes, especially in the very low, uh, well, in very low light levels. And if we walk in the middle of nature, um, uh, in the middle of the night, when there is a new moon, and that moon is just shining a little bit, I can walk around, the human species, if you wish, can walk around, and we can st all see pretty well. This is because the pupil of our eyes actually increases in order for that tiny little bit of light actually to be able to enter our, our eyes. In color, in color distinction, if you wish, it is exactly the same. You have to do with cones and rods that are part of your, uh, of your eye, of your, of your eyesight as, uh, as such. And I just wanted to share with you that, um, well, that the human species is extremely sensitive and they're more sensitive for colder color changes than to warmer color changes. And that has to do with macadam ellipsis. On the right hand side, you will here see again the color triangle with many uh, macadam ellipsis and you will see something strange. Now first, the definition, a macadam ellipsis is a region in the uh, chromaticity diagram which contains all colors. And if uh, the colors are basically inside such a circle, it, in such an ellipse, I should say, obviously, it means that the average human eye sees all of those elements as the same as the same colors. But you see something strange here. You see that the warmer the colors are, the bigger the ellipses are, and on the other hand, the colder the colors are, the smaller the ellipses are. And this is what basically uh, explains why colder colors are 
well, are quicker to be seen. Color, colder color differences are quicker to be seen by the human body um, or by the human species as, uh, as such. If you have a change of warmer colors, it's more difficult to see, but colder colors, it's, uh, it's more difficult to manage this in your, uh, in your project. Just a little sidestep. I would like to continue now with our light shape development. Again, go back to my four painters, uh, define the color purple. This is where DALI 2 device up 8 comes in, but mixing those colors cleverly, this is where light shape comes in. I can't change the fact that every LED that is used in whatever LED luminaire out there is technically different. Different current levels give different light levels. Different current levels give, uh, and if you increase the current, uh, the light level is not doubled. It's not a linear line. Uh, and once and for all as well, the colors of every LED is different too. And this is what you have, to, uh, you have to manage. So you need your controller to know about the LEDs that are on the other side. Because how otherwise can you ask for a certain color temperature and you know you're going to get it. And this is where light shape comes in. So light shape is for the cleverness into our driver that enable you to do that automatic calibration, if you wish. You need to tell the driver which LEDs are connected. Going back to my painters, you need to tell the painter what types of red paint and what types of blue paint are actually in the tubes in order for the painter to be able to create that specific uh, Pantone color of purple that I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to create. Let's get to, the, uh, to our technical implementation uh, because we are a technical company. We make drivers. I mean, in, in essence, that's what we do. And Lightship is a combination of you need a certain piece of hardware, you need a driver, you need firmware that actually well, forms the basis of our, of our lighting when it comes to proper dimming, when it comes to control, when it comes to um, a perfect dimming down to zero, when it comes to a good story on Flickr. And you need a flux to programming software that help you to actually profile the driver and tell the driver which LEDs are actually connected. Because if you tell the driver which LEDs are connected, if then the DALI 2 DD8 driver asks for, con for certain color temperature, you know you're going to get it. So the calculation part that Paul was talking about, this is what we have already implemented for you in our driver. So a perfect cooperation between DALI, the DALI Alliance, who set the standard at Eldoled and actually executing it. And in essence, this is what we want to achieve, that all four colors that we, that we make are the same. And this is the challenge of every light design process. We need to manage the consistency in your project. It is not about having one single LED change color. No, it's about managing this in your total project as a lighting designer in that hotel room as such. So with this, I would like to basically give my most important conclusion of today. DALI 2 DTA TC is a great addition in our languages in order to help us to really define Dynamic white colors, that's uh, lesson number one. And lesson number two, you need something more. You need further color science in the LED driver that make that happen, and we, call that, uh, and we call that light shape. So basically, this is where we would like to end. This is how the DALI Alliance, in combination with Eldoled, make it happen. And for the lighting designers that are currently in, in, the, in the call, we make your creative, well, your creative plans, your creative ideas become reality. We give you a, a bunch of tools that help you to create this, uh, this perfect lighting experience, just as you are aware of Eldoled do doing that with dimming and flicker. And this is, I would like to hand over and get back to Matt as the moderator of uh, today. Matt, back to you. Well, thanks very much, Hay, and thank you, Paul, as well. That was a um, very, very interesting stuff, as I'm sure our audience out there will agree. Uh, we're going to turn things over to a Q&A now. We've had a couple of questions come through. Remember, keep your questions coming in using the Q&A tab and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, but before we dive into those, I have my own question, which I would like to ask uh, Hey first, but it's probably applicable to Paul as well. Um, so Hey, I really enjoyed your analogy of uh, mixing colours to make purple and how everyone would come up with their own different ideas of it. And it kind of goes to show that the sort of perspective and context is really important. And um, I suppose for you guys, it's about making sure there's a consistency for everyone so that they're all coming up with the same thing. But with something like human centric lighting, it's something which is so subjective, like everyone has their own ideas of what's best. So how do you create that consistency for something that's so uh, open? Yeah. Not sure if I'm alive again. I can keep talking. Yeah, OK. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So there are many different recipes, if you wish, 
that uh, that do exist here, uh, Matt. And this is exactly how I how I started my story as well. There are many recipes. There are many different ways in which you can manage this circadian cycle, and it's very much application dependent. Uh, because if you if you go for an application in a hospital, there might be different rules than an application in a school, or um, an application in the in the in the library that I, that I just said. What we are doing is elderly, we're, best, we, we're giving you a bunch of technical possibilities, um, technical enablers that basically help you, the designer, in combination with the Lumina Maker to make, this, uh, to make this happen. So the profiling of the driver is basically aligned with what type of LEDs you are connected. So in essence, what we're doing with light, well, first of all, once and for all, we are, um, uh, complying to the DALI standard, uh, that's one. But secondly, we offer you tools that basically tell the driver which LEDs are connected, and that enables that consistent approach regardless of which recipe is actually being used. Because that's not up to us, that is up to, I don't know, the Lumina maker, the, uh, the, 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 the designer in order to include those recipes in this, for example, dynamic cycle. Mm. Sure, so I suppose you're essentially just providing them with the tools to create their own sort of idea exactly. based on That's what it. we're creating we we are we are um well a technology enabler if you wish in that area definitely okay so um following on from that um you obviously you guys you create all the tools for the designers to use but how do you manage it and make sure that it's all programmed correctly yeah this is where by all means we need the special by all means we need the specifier in order to to specify it wanting this solution and then we need there's no other way that we need the involvement of the lumina maker to be able to actually help us in programming it because the lumina maker is most of the time the only one in the cycle who actually knows which leds are connected going back to my painters he is the only one who actually knows which type of paint is actually being used in for creating the color purple every led is different the the, the oem and that's such a strange term that we always use. The Lumina Maker is the key element in order to make it uh, to make it work. So it's a, a, an interesting triangle between Lumina Maker, Lighting Designer, and us in order to make this uh, become reality too. Okay, great. And um, we've had a question come through from Corey Achito. Thank you, Corey, for your question. Uh, I suppose this is probably more applicable to you, Paul. Um, he asks if we have two fixtures running Dali DT8 one using TC tunable white with a two CCT white light engine and the other using RGB WAF on an RGB W light engine. Can we expect the commands produce 3000K to produce the same output in both fixtures? It's quite a technical question, that one. <laughs> yeah, it is quite technical. It's an interesting. It's a really good question, actually. Um, and uh, the, the first thing I would say is that, um, that RGB WAF doesn't have the facility for calibration. So, uh, so, so in itself, RGB WAF mode, um, you know, probably wouldn't afford that uh, that same consistency. However, um, drivers which are capable of uh, of RGB WAF or RGB W lamp configuration, um, if if they're running in TC mode, then of course that calibration would then apply. Uh, and so the the simple answer is, is yes. I mean, obviously there will always be some some minor tolerances, but uh, but fundamentally, yeah. The, the the if the device is calibrated in TC mode to uh, to give that same um, output each time, then uh, regardless of how many light sources it actually has uh, to create that, then it should be repeatable. Okay, great. Um, so when will RGBWAF be available in Dali 2? OK, so RGBWAF uh, and, um, and XY are currently in progress. The, uh, the, the tests are being developed now. Um, because we're a, a membership led organization, um, we rely heavily on, on volunteer activities of our members. Um, and so, um, you know, things like coronavirus can uh, can severely disrupt those um, but, um, but so we, we don't tend to give definitive uh, time schedules but, uh, but they're in progress now and we we're expecting those to be you know barring any uh, total calamities to be uh, to be available within the first half of this year okay great 
And um, we've had another question come through. Uh, remember, keep getting your questions coming into us. Um, someone has asked, how does this affect fiber optic configurations, i.e. in a feature installation? So I think, hey, would you like to handle this one? Yes. Yes, I can handle it. Um, basically, it works perfectly as well with fiber optics. There is no, there's not a lot I, I can say about that. It's just, it works also with fiber optics. And, and that's, the, uh, that's the answer that I can uh, give. No difficulties whatsoever here. <laughs> right, okay, that's a, an easy question. And um, yes. we've had another question from um, Dawn Hollingsworth as well, who's asked if light shape works on DMX as well as well, I love this question, yeah. That's a great question, I really love it. Um, so this is not a matter of technicalities. Uh, if we talk about the technicalities, yes, we can make light shape work on DMX drivers. Um, Unfortunately, we have also business decisions that need to be made here within the company about what to do first. And we've decided to start with DALI and to see if that really lifts off and to see how we can further develop that. So the answer to Dawn is yes, DMX would be possible, uh, but it's not planned yet. I have to be honest here as well. Not planned yet, but who knows what will, what will, uh, what will change in future. Today only in DALI. Okay, great. And we've had um, a question come through from Todd Quinlan, um, who asks, is the light shape driver given SPD curves to determine the dimming algorithm to be used and uh, what data is programmed to assist? I can, uh, I can answer that too. Uh, <laughs> that's a very interesting question, obviously, but that has to do with the, uh, with the R&D and the technical knowledge within our company. We spent um, a lot of development resources, a lot of development money into going this, and I would say this is the secret of Eldolet. Uh, we won't share um, the, uh, the algorithms that we use in order to mix those colors. That is basically integrated into our driver. If you would like to use it, uh, please buy an Eldolet driver and, uh, and use them for yourself. Good question, by the way. <laughs> okay, and um, we've got another question here from James. This is, uh, it looks like another relatively technical one. Um, he asks, if I have CCT tape and I can tell you what chip sizes, e.g. 2835 and colour temperatures, e.g. 2700 and 6500, uh, is that enough to set the driver? Oh, glumen output. Yeah. Um, we actually need um, two elements in order for us to program the driver correctly. Again, a very good and detailed technical question. We need obviously indeed colour temperatures, so that's one. But secondly, we also need lumen outputs. So it's a combination of lumen outputs, uh, current levels, and color. And color, those are the three topics that we need per LED in order to, uh, to have a color mixing algorithm work. Okay, very great. Very but very detailed question, but very good. Again, thank you. <laughs> and um, we've got another question here. Um, if a luminaire manufacturer isn't using light shape, can light shape be applied at the commissioning stage? The answer is no. That is impossible. Uh, um, we need the, well, the algorithms are actually part of the driver itself, and you need to switch that on, if you wish, that, uh, that feature, and that will help us in order to do so. I can't uh, use it uh, with, with, without light shape. And that is exactly the difficulty that many designers have as well, because everybody thinks that with just specifying DALI do TT8, your problem is solved. And also my message here to you today, it's not. You need something more. You need to think of those color mixing algorithms inside because without driver side color science, it is just not possible to achieve that certain color temperature that you're actually asking for. Okay, and um, we've got another question about light shape here. Seems to be a lot of questions for you, hey? Uh, cool. This one's not from Michael Beaufort, who says, um, how will light shape DALI modules work when used with another alternate manufacturer's equivalent DALI modules when available? Uh, if you're using more than one luminaire manufacturer and would end up having to use two different lighting control softwares to control the mixed colors based on the specific luminaire manufacturer. I think it might be one for me actually. Uh, if, if I start, uh, maybe he can pick up at the, if, if there's anything to add. That uh, for, from my view, um, there should be consistency. So um, the, uh, the whole point of, uh, of bringing DALI uh, TC into uh, or tunable white into uh, the DALI 2 certification program is try to, uh, to to develop that consistency in the market uh, and that interoperability. So 
if the, uh, the, the, the devices are, um, are calibrated, if, if all the information is available to the driver um, and, uh, and those drivers are, uh, are set up in a particular way, then there should be consistency. Um, of course, if you just buy a couple of random luminaires uh, from, from different manufacturers um, that incorporate DT8, but without any knowledge of the application, then that's a, that's a completely different thing and, uh, and it becomes much more challenging. Mm, sure. Hey, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Yes. If we know the data about the LEDs, that is so crucial here. If we know the data about these LEDs, then we can make that work as well. And so it's about data about the LEDs that actually do make the difference in this, uh, in this, uh, in this story. This was from Michael Beaufort from, uh, from London. Hi, Michael. <laughs> and um, we've had another uh, question come through. It's probably uh, more of a simple question for UK. Um, how do elder led uh, products work with Chinese made luminaires? Well, compatibility? Perfectly well. I mean, in essence, a driver as such can be connected to any, any different, well, there are technical constraints, obviously, but can be connected to any LED that you would like to have. Um, also, China. Um, uh, products. I have to say, we don't sell our drivers directly into China, but this is business decision that has nothing to do with technology. There are many luminar makers out there who probably use Chinese boards, and that is not a problem whatsoever. So it's a matter of technology that actually makes the, makes a difference. That we don't sell in China or towards China is, is a business decision. Okay. And um, we've got a uh, another question which um, I'll direct to you, Paul. Um, it says tunable white normally uses only two lamps, but um, can it be done in drivers that have several coloured lamps? Yeah, so I mean, the, the simple answer is yes. Um, it actually relates back to the uh, the previous question about uh, RGBW uh, lamps. So um, yeah, it, it's uh, clearly the uh, the the more channels, are probably the more uh, the more accuracy you have in terms of uh, you know the better palette you have to, uh, to, to blend the colors. Um, and in terms of circadian lighting, often uh, it's done with, with multiple channels to, uh, to, to reduce uh, or enhance, for example, the, uh, the blue content um, or the blue element of the spectrum. So, uh, so two is, is the minimum because obviously you need to go from something uh, you know, cool white to warm white, for example. So that would be the, the minimum requirement. But, uh, but if there's more channels, then, uh, then that's also fine. Okay, great. And um, we've had another question come through from uh, Barry Van Etten. Thank you very much for your question, Barry, um, which is regarding the topic of today of human-centric lighting. Um, he says, it's important to stay on the BBL uh, using, two C using CTs at 2700 and 6500 will result in a color position outside of the BBL. So we need three color temperatures to follow the locus. Um, uh, can this be achieved with light shape? Hi, Barry. Not today, unfortunately. Today, light shape is with two colors, or with two output groups and then two colors. And again, it's the same uh, discussion we're having with other ones. This is also, we are, we are thinking of developing uh, a solution with more channels because you're absolutely right. The more channels you're using, the more colors you're using, the more, possibilities that you create to actually make light that actually follows that black, black body locus better because with two it's, it's tougher. Um, but also here, it's a matter of development resources via getting it, uh, getting it to work. But uh, today, light shape is only for two um, uh, output groups and for two colors. Okay, fantastic. Well, um, at the moment, I think that is, uh, that's all the questions that we have, uh, unless any come through very suddenly, but it looks like um, I think we've exhausted everyone's uh, questions for today. So um, I just wanted to say thank you very much to Hey and to Paul for a, a very interesting presentation. And I hope um, all of our audiences enjoyed it as well. We uh, we definitely did. I would like to thank uh, Art Magazine for organizing it, Paul for helping us to, uh, uh, to communicate together with you, our story on human centric lighting, and thank all the audience for all the uh, your uh, your interest and your you've stayed you've all stayed on that's really positive see we see that that you've all stayed on so that's good mm -hmm. news um thanks for this and uh, looking forward to talk to you real life 
uh, whenever the COVID misery is over. Many thanks to all of you. Yeah, the same from me. Thanks very much, Hay, and, and thanks, Matt, for, uh, for, for moderating this. It's my pleasure. Thanks very much, guys.